In recent media, the anti-hero archetype has quickly risen to being the audience's favourite type of hero. Gone are the days where clean cookie-cutter heroes are seen as the bread and butter of film and TV, and certainly the same could be said for gaming. The rise to prominence of edgier, more morally grey characters such as Deadpool, Geralt of Riviere, and Jamie Lannister mark a change in how we digest media. Are these characters seen as objectively morally good? Probably not. We as an audience, evidently across the board, enjoy watching them, trying to empathise with them in spite of their flaws, and understand their actions. It is okay for characters to be human, to have questionable morals, and to not just be a paragon of pure goodness. And this is reflected in the Yakuza series as well. A recent fan poll conducted at the end of 2018 showed the ever-eccentric Goro Majima to be a clear favourite in the Yakuza series. Perhaps somewhat surprising, as he has never been the clear-cut protagonist of the series, spending most of the time as a darker reflection to series hero Kazuma Kiryu. But this result makes a lot of sense, and it is no way an indictment on any of the other characters in the series, including Kiryu. Majima really is just that interesting of a character. Little warning, this video will not be spoiler free. Certainly, if you have yet to at least play Yakuza 0 and Kiwami, I would suggest you play them before watching this video. Welcome to the gaming conversation. We make weekly gaming critiques every Saturday coming out at 10am UK time. And today, we're going to take a look at why Goro Majima is one of the most interesting characters in gaming. Goro Majima was first introduced into the Yakuza series back in the original game in 2005. Voiced by the legendary Mark Hamill in the English dub, Majima by all intents and purposes was not a good guy. Not a good guy at all. And recently being able to play the remaster in Kiwami right after Yakuza 0, a game in which Majima is very much a hero, was very interesting and at times jarring. As far as I am concerned, it is clear to see that initially Majima was intended to be a simple, one-note antagonist for series protagonist, Kiliu. His introduction where he savagely beats up a fellow Yakuza member before having to be pulled away by Kiryu does little to paint him in a positive light. Throughout the game, Kiryu will square off with Majima, and whilst the remake tries to soften the harshness of his character under the pretense of the Majima Everywhere system, where Majima attacks Kiryu randomly to help strengthen his skills that had weakened due to his time in prison. The reality is that from a narrative standpoint, it is clear to see that he is a bad dude. He drives a truck into Shangri-La and kidnaps Kiryu's adoptive daughter Haruka for goodness sake. However, as the series has developed, Majima's relationship with Kiryu and other characters in the series, as well as the decisions he makes, help blur the lines and make him a whole lot more interesting. When taking a look at and trying to understand the character of Goro Majima, Yakuza 0 is the best place to start. After all, this is the game where the player gets a real, true introspective look into the character of Majima. The narrative of Yakuza 0 is one of expectation, duty, and ultimately the inability for neither Kiliu or Majima to fully adhere to the Yakuza code. Now, where Kiliu outright disobeys his Yakuza superiors, Majima so desperately tries to follow instructions. He wants to be Yakuza, but also he has a pure heart. And when he is given a hit job to kill a seemingly innocent Makoto Makimura, he is sent into an inner conflict that spans the rest of the game between his own moral code and what is needed for him to do to become Yakuza once again. Majima's story in Zero is very much a romantic tragedy. He is torn between his love and quite literally his life. And when it materialises that Makoto is very much within the crosshairs of the Dojima family and the Omi Alliance, the two major Yakuza clans, this internal battle leads to him becoming directly involved in an external war. It is not hard to feel extremely sympathetic towards Majima, and as we will get to later, more understanding of the motivations behind his actions and the mad dog persona. He can't help the way he feels. He is at his core a good man who desperately wants to be Yakuza, wants to redeem his sworn brother Saijima, which the game hints that he betrayed or let down in some way, and subsequently led to his imprisonment. 
Majima is constantly torn between his nature, his duty, and in the middle of all this madness, his love for Makoto. Of course, in the end, he never gets Makoto. Her blindness being cured tragically reminds the player that she doesn't even recognize him as a passerby. And whilst Majima may have finally gotten himself back into the Yakuza, there is a certain hollowness that accompanies him now throughout the rest of the series. Yakuza 0 is Majima's game. We see his character go through so much throughout the story. And by the end, the man we see help Makoto, the individual who is so happy to help out the citizens of Osaka in all the zany sub-stories, has changed. He has lost so much, friends, his love, and his desire to follow the Yakuza way, but he survives. And he has a rather unorthodox method of coping. Throughout the duration of history, us simple humans have quickly tried to establish rules, systems and societal norms. At times under the guise of religious premises, in some cases put forth by an authoritarian government, and more recently through democracy. I believe we all develop personas, whether it be in the form of digital avatars or in-person disguises for protection or another reason. And one of the factors in us doing this is because of the rules of society so to speak. Majima outright rejects societal concepts in Yakuza with the formation of the Mad Dog persona. And this is one of the major reasons why his character is so interesting. As we discussed before, the events of Yakuza 0 are what led to the creation of the Mad Dog of Shimano, which goes from just an intimidating nickname to a persona that Majima so carefully wears. But crucially, it is a persona. This is not Majima's true nature, and, if we take a look at this persona, it shows us just how interesting he is as a character. In a scene with Sagawa at the end of Yakuza 0, we see Majima donning his iconic jacket and shorter hairstyle. It is apparent that at this point, Majima has become the mad dog. He is going to live his life the way he wants to, crazier than anyone else. Yes, it may seem like one of the world's worst quarter-life crises, but this changing character this persona Majima has now incarnated is something that will be with him in some form throughout the series. Majima has been hurt truly by the events of Yakuza 0, become in many ways disillusioned with the Yakuza way, the Yakuza way he spent so long trying to abide by. And in response, he has created this crazy facade as a defense mechanism against the society but doesn't have a clue about the difference between right and wrong or so how he puts it. The eccentric, at times antagonistic, and at times also an ally that we see later in games, may seem to act arbitrarily. However, it is clear that Majima is acting in adherence to some form of code. The idea that there is no code. People don't know the difference between right and wrong. They act with their own agendas. And to survive, he is going to live crazier than any of them and have fun ultimately. Majima, from a philosophical standpoint, has taken an almost nihilistic approach, rejecting society's norms, evident in his very uncommon choice of clothing and tacky jacket, as Sagawa points out. This decision, however, isn't just random spontaneity. Majima is smart, cunning, and ultimately, a survivor. He meets characters in Zero that act as formative inspiration for the mad dog. The perverse, crazy Nishitani acts as a very transparent prelude to the craziness that Majima will later show. The character of Lee not only bears strong resemblance and character to his brother Saijima, but also shows him there is another way. And of course, Sagawa's tenacity gives him a path to survive in the Yakuza world. Nishitani and Saijima in particular show Majima that you can be free, live how you want and still be happy. All of this leads to Majima tightly wearing the mad dog mask to protect him from feeling any more pain and to give him the strength to one day lead his own Yakuza family. The story of Goro Majima is one rooted heavily in the loss of oneself, the constant postulating of the purpose of life and the need to survive. Majima at one point may have just seemed like a mad dog, but in reality, he might be the sanest of them all. His character is so compelling because as the player, as the audience, 
we can almost relate to him. I'm sure at times, we have all questioned certain norms in society, and occasionally, you do wonder what it would be like to truly live free, unencumbered by any code but your own. Look at the recent Joker movie, for example, which presented similar thoughts and concepts. The character of Majima may seem crazy, but in reality, he has more control than most. His mad dog persona commands respect and fear all the same throughout the series. And watching the facade slowly unravel makes incredible viewing. Besides, Majima construction is just brilliant, and I'm sure we can all agree on that. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of The Gaming Conversation. Subscribe for weekly videos every Saturday at 10 a.m. UK time. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating helps the channel a lot. And feel free to share with anyone who you think may be interested. Let's continue the conversation in the comment section with the question, who is your favorite character in gaming? Thank you once again for watching. I have been Michael J. H. And at times, obscenely empathetic towards Majima. Peace.